Thank you very much. Right, so I'm Manik Varma from Microsoft Research, and I will be talking about extreme classification, which is a new research area in machine learning which our group started, and which has also opened a new paradigm for thinking about key applications in extremely large-scale search and recommendation. Now, I suspect that some of you might not have heard the term extreme classification before, so let me start by giving some context. So in traditional classification, we take an input such as an image, a document, or an audio clip and classify it into a small number of categories. For example, a couple of decades ago, image classifiers would categorize inputs into hundreds of visual categories. And if we had applied them to this popular Wally image, we might have gotten back a few categories such as person, young, hand, non-photo, etc. On the other hand, Extreme classification allows us to classify inputs into millions or even billions of categories. For instance, we might want to classify this Wally image into not just a hundred categories, but say all the words in the dictionary or all the concepts on Wikipedia or the top hundred million queries currently being asked on Bing today, or perhaps even the subset of billions of people around the world who might be interested in finding Wally in this image. Now, the reason that extreme classification is so exciting is because it not only allows us to tackle web scale classification problems in diverse domains ranging from computer vision to natural language processing, but because it has also opened a new paradigm for thinking about key applications in large scale search and recommendation. In fact, many high impact applications in search and recommendation can be reformulated as classification tasks by simply treating each item to be ranked or recommended as a separate class in a multi-label classifier. In particular, if we had a space of users X and a space of items Y, all we would need to do is learn a multi-label classification function F, which would take a point in the space of users and map it to a set of points in the space of items, so that when a user comes in, we can simply apply the classification function F, see which classes get predicted, and then return the items corresponding to those classes to the user, either as a recommended bag or as a rank list, depending on the application. So as you can see, this simple principle allows us to reformulate many search and recommendation problems as classification tasks. Now, this can be an incredibly powerful idea as it can lead to very significant gains in key performance indicators, including user experience metrics, click-through rates, coverage, diversity, advertiser satisfaction, revenue, etc. And as a result, our extreme classifiers have been tech transferred into virtually every major product and market on the Microsoft advertising platform, where they are making billions of predictions a day, helping hundreds of millions of people, and generating revenue for many small and medium enterprises around the world, and helping them find new customers, which is very important during the pandemic. Also, we've developed a number of state-of-the-art algorithms in order to tackle these applications, and these have been published in premier venues including NeurIPS, ICML, KDD, WWW, and Wisdom. In fact, our SLICE algorithm won the Best Paper Award at Wisdom 2019, which is the premier conference for web search and data mining, as it led to very significant gains for recommending related queries on the Bing search engine. And our code for Slice and all our other algorithms is available on the Extreme Classification Repository, which our group maintains. So let me very briefly explain why Extreme Classification can give better results than leading techniques for search and recommendation. So the state of the art for search and recommendation is Siamese Networks, where we train a leading architecture such as BERT or GPT-3 in a contrastive way so that users get embedded close by to the items they like and far away from the items they dislike. Now, this is a great architecture for recommending new items which have never been seen during training because you can simply pass the new item through the Siamese network so that it gets embedded close to the users to whom it will be ultimately recommended. However, extreme classification allows you to do much better while recommending items that you have seen previously during training and for which users have provided some supervised signals in the forms of clicks, likes, purchases, or conversions. In this very important special case, extreme classification generalizes Siamese networks 
by learning a separate classifier per item above and beyond whatever was learned by the original Siamese network. Now this can lead to significant accuracy gains because if you had a billion items during training that were embedded in a thousand dimensional space, then your extreme classifier would have a trillion parameters more than your Siamese network, even though your Siamese network might have been based on the largest BERT or GPT-3 variant. Of course, this gives rise to some of the largest training and inference problems in AI, which can lead to very interesting computational and statistical research challenges. For example, where are you going to get the terabyte of RAM needed to store your model? not to mention the RAM needed to store the gradients, momentum, etc. Similarly, even if it were to take you just a millisecond in order to evaluate one of these item classifiers, it would take you more than 10 days to make recommendations for a, even a single user. And that's because the cost of doing the forward pass for a single data point is 10 days. And similarly, training would take months, if not years. So the key research challenge that we need to address in extreme classification is how do we learn highly accurate extreme classifiers whose time and space complexity grows logarithmically with the number of items rather than linearly. Now I won't be able to discuss all the algorithms that have been developed at Microsoft in order to address this research challenge. Instead, I'll just briefly mention that many of these leading algorithms were developed using the DeepXML framework for deep extreme classification, which was published at Wisdom. So DeepXML addresses our research challenge by decomposing the original extreme classification task into four simpler subtasks or modules, each of which has log time complexity while nevertheless being highly accurate. And so you can derive many different algorithms by plugging in various components into these four deep XML, deep XML modules in order to address the requirements of various applications. So this makes deep XML very flexible and very powerful because now you can get state of the art accuracies on a range of diverse applications by just making minor modifications in the deep XML pipeline. And you don't need to go back to the drawing board each time and start from scratch for each application. Now my colleague Deepak Saini will be giving more details about DeepXML in a talk later on. So let me just give a very brief overview right now. So in module one of DeepXML, you plug in the feature architecture that is the most appropriate for your application, such as BERT or visual transformers or whatever, and train it using Siamese contrastive learning or some other suitable loss function of your choice. Right, so module one corresponds to your basic Siamese network. Then in module two, you can plug in your favorite approximate nearest neighbor search or ANS algorithm and reduce your billion item problem to an order log billion item problem. The key insight is that even though the retailer might be trying to sell a billion items, the average user is interested in buying only order log billion of these items at a given point of, of time. So, even though the problem looks like a billion item problem overall from the perspective of the retailer, it is actually an order log billion item problem from the perspective of the average user. And that's because the vast majority of the items are completely uninteresting and can be easily discarded for the user. So this reduction in complexity happens in module two. Then in module three, you can plug in any leading transfer learning algorithm that will transfer the features that were learned in module one and fine tune them for these order log billion items per user. Finally, in module four, you can plug in whatever item classifiers you prefer and train them to predict these order log billion items based on the user's representation that was learned in module three. So this leads to a highly scalable and accurate framework, which is also very easy to use as you can simply plug in off the shelf components to tackle diverse applications. In fact, our deep XML paper and subsequent publications show how you can choose these components to obtain state of the art accuracies on multiple short text applications 
while reducing the training time to be just two days on six V100 GPUs and the inference time to be just a few milliseconds on a CPU on problems involving 100 million items. So let's now apply DeepXML to the task of making personalized recommendations at web scale where we have billions of users who are browsing trillions of web pages and asking billions of queries and where we have to make personalized recommendations of billions of items based on this search and browsing activity. Of course, all of this needs to be carried out within the ambit of GDPR and other regulations for protecting privacy and personal data. And so personalized recommendations should be served to only those users who want them and users should be able to opt out at any point of time and have their history deleted. So in order to make hyper personalized recommendations, we need to infer the user's intent in an extremely fine grained manner. And this can be done in multiple ways. For example, given the fact that the user is browsing a particular web page, we can represent the user's intent explicitly by the set of queries that the user could have asked on Bing in order to reach this web page. In this pre COVID example, the user is browsing this PNO web page because they wanted to go on a cruise and this intent can be represented by these Bing queries. So this leads to an extreme classification problem where the input to the deep XML based extreme classification function F is the visited web page and the classes are the top million or top billion queries currently being asked on Bing. So this leads to an explicit representation of the user's intent, which is interpretable. An alternative would be to represent the user's intent implicitly by reformulating the extreme classification problem to take the visited web page as input once again, but to this time pre directly predict the set of recommended items by treating each item as a class, as a separate class in DeepXML's extreme classifier F. In this case, the embeddings learned by DeepXML in its penultimate layer would serve as an implicit representation of the user's intent in browsing this web page. We can now make personalized recommendations based on these inferred intents in many different ways. To take just one example in the explicit setting, we can select one of the queries predicted by DeepXML across all the web pages visited by the user in a session and then submit the selected query to Bing and recommend items to the user based on Bing's results. For example, here is what the user was recommended when we selected the query book PNO cruises and submitted it to Bing. Alternatively, in the implicit setting, we can use an approximate nearest neighbor search algorithm to retrieve the items lying closest to each of the visited web pages and then recommend the most relevant items from this retrieved set. Now we also had to tackle many systems challenges in order to deploy our solution at web scale. In particular, we needed to make more than a billion predictions per day at a rate of 150,000 predictions per second. And for contrast, remember that our original calculation was that a single prediction would take more than 10 days. And we wanted to first do this using some CPUs that we had lying around spare rather than invest in dedicated FPGAs or GPUs though we are also exploring those options now. And on top of that, we wanted to achieve these low latencies and high throughputs without sacrificing accuracy. In fact, we wanted to get a significant lift in accuracy as compared to all the state of the art personalization techniques that were running in production in Microsoft. Now, I won't be able to uh, go into the details of how we address these systems challenges due to lack of time but you can read about our feature architecture and some of our systems choices in our deep XML paper and subsequent publications. So if we were to look at the results, then when we add our extreme classifiers to the ensemble of leading personalization techniques in production, then we find two things. First, we see that the click through rate has gone up by 30%. And second, that we have also managed to increase the number of excellent predictions being made by 21%. And you can find many more numbers in our papers comparing DeepXML to individual state of the art techniques rather than the entire ensemble. So all these results demonstrate that we have been able to significantly increase ac accuracy and to really recommend the items that the users were looking for while meeting all our service level agreements on latency, throughput, memory and operating costs. Furthermore, 
if you were to do a qualitative analysis of the inferred intents, then as you can see, deep XML's predictions are not only much more accurate, but they are also more diverse and capture the different facets of the user's intent. Whereas the traditional approaches often tend to focus on the wrong information, such as the years in the cruise example, or on industrial supply in the masking tape example, and therefore altogether miss out the user's true intent. So this further demonstrates the benefits of extreme classification over traditional ML, IR, and NLP approaches to search and recommendation. So to conclude, I'd like to reiterate that extreme classification is a new research area in machine learning, which not only lets us tackle web scale classification problems, but which has also opened a new paradigm for key applications in search and recommendation. Now, in order to tackle these applications, Microsoft has developed a number of algorithms that have been published at premier venues and whose source code is available on the extreme classification repository, which my group maintains. In fact, if you are new to the area and looking to learn more, then the repository might be a good place to start as it contains code from many groups around the world, as well as data sets, metrics, benchmark results, which make it very easy to carry out open reproducible academic research. So please check out the repository. And if you would like to uh, contribute an algorithm or a data set or collaborate with us, then do let me know. Thank you very much.